Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. With Ubuntu Server 2404 coming out recently, I decided to make a series of videos showing you how to build various things on Ubuntu Server. And in this video, we're going to be setting up Jenkins along with a Jenkins agent, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So as always, what I'll do is walk you through the process every step of the way. All you need is an Ubuntu Server ready to go. You just have to have that installed. But if you don't have Ubuntu Server installed, I have a video already that walks you through that process. And I'll leave a card for that video right about here if you don't have that installed just yet. But if you do have Ubuntu Server installed, then that's all you need and you're ready to go. If you're looking for a full tutorial on how to use Jenkins, this video is for installing it and setting it up, just to let you know. So we will be setting it up in this video, but this is not a full usage guide for Jenkins. We'll be strictly focusing on setting it up in this video. But before we get started, just a little bit of errata to let you guys know about. I wanted to let you guys know especially that the official shop for Learn Linux TV has just been updated with brand new products. So for all of you distro hoppers out there, I got a shirt for you. I have a distro hopper shirt, but I also have shirts for coffee drinkers, like the Aptist All Coffee shirt. That one's pretty cool. A Fedora shirt, Arch Linux, there's all kinds of things, even backpacks, fanny packs, you name it. So support Linux learning and get yourself something nice. It's a win-win. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's time to set up Jenkins. So let's get started. So here in my Proxmox server, I have a Jenkins server, as you can see right here, and it's booting up. I also have a Jenkins agent. VM ID is 990 and 991 over on the left. So basically I've created two servers for this project. You only really need one. The agent is optional, but if you want to set up an agent, then I recommend that you set up another Ubuntu server installation for that. But let's get started. So what I'll do is find the IP address for the server, and it's this one right here, Jenkins test. And in my case, it's going to be right here. So here's the IP address. I'm just going to copy that. Next in my terminal, what I'll do is use SSH to connect to the server. I'll paste in the IP address. And here we go. Now, as an aside, you don't have to use Proxmox. Proxmox is just the solution that I use. You could use a VPS like DigitalOcean, Akamai, one of the cloud providers, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave it up to you to make sure that it's updated and secure. Now I do have a video that goes over everything you need to do every time you set up a new Linux server, and I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Just make sure you've done all those things before we continue. Those things aren't specific to Jenkins, which is why they're not in this video, but that video will walk you through setting up a user for yourself, updating the system and things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is run sudo apt update just to make sure that the package repository index isn't stale or anything. And then next what we'll do is install Java. Java is required for Jenkins, so that's why we're installing this. But what I'll do is paste in the command, and I'll take a moment to mention the fact that you can find this command along with all the others that I'll be using in this video in the official blog post for this video. If you check the description down below, you'll find a link to that. So if you wanna copy and paste all of the commands that I'm using, you can do that. So go ahead and open that up if you want to. Anyway, in my case, I'm installing OpenJDK 17 JRE, the one that you see right here. So I'll press enter. Enter again to accept the defaults. We do expect all of these dependencies. And now that's done. Now, before we continue, we should make sure to test Java, you know, just to make sure that it works. And we could do that by typing java-version. And if this works, it should report the version that we've installed. And so far, so good. We do see output here. It's OpenJDK version 17.0.11, which may or may not be different by the time you're running through these instructions, but it does show that we have Java. So, so far, so good. Anyway, here's the next command that we'll need to run. And what this is doing is setting up the key that we'll need to download Jenkins. We wanna make sure that we're downloading it securely. This is for the repository that we'll be adding afterwards. So I'll press enter and that should be done. It's pretty easy. And the next thing we'll do is install the repository. Again, it's a long command, so I'll just paste it in right here. Now you're probably starting to see why I think you should copy and paste commands. This one is a little on the longer side, but what we're doing is adding the repository so that way we can install Jenkins. So I'll press enter. That was easy enough. 
So we should be able to run sudo apt update and see Jenkins in the list, and we do. The third and the fourth line of output show that the Jenkins server is being inspected for packages here. So that should mean that we have the repository. Now installing Jenkins is pretty easy now that we have the repository. All we have to do is run sudo apt install. We're going to install Jenkins, just like that. I'll press enter and then enter again. And now Jenkins is actually installed. Now that we have that installed, what we'll do is find the IP address if we already forgot what it was like I did, but anyway, here it is. So I'll copy this. And then what we're going to do is go to a web browser. And here I have the Portainer installation that I used in a previous video. So check out my Portainer video if you haven't already done so, but I'll just paste in the IP address for the Jenkins server. And what we want to do is add colon port 8080 to the end of this. And now we have Jenkins, but we have to unlock it. For security purposes, we don't want someone to come in after us and set it up for them. We want this set up for our purposes. We don't want a man in the middle attack going on here. So this is locked and that's okay. This is a good thing. So all we have to do is copy this line right here, go back to our terminal and to view the file, we'll need sudo. It's a protected file. We could use the cat command to view the contents of it. And then we'll paste it in right here. And there's the file. So let's press enter. And we get a long string of characters here. Yours will be different than mine, but we're going to copy this here. We want to grab all of that, go back to our browser. And then, as you can probably guess, we'll paste that in right here and then click continue. Next, we'll choose install suggested plugins. You don't have to do this, but it's a good idea to do this if you're just starting out with Jenkins. After you get more familiar with it, you could have a more streamlined install, but I'll just click on this right here to install those. And this could take a moment. So we'll let this finish and then I'll be right back. All right, so now what we're going to do is create a user for ourselves. So I'll put my name in right there. We'll add a password. And again, So we're just basically filling out this information. And then we'll click save and continue. Now for the Jenkins URL, if you have a domain name, you could add that here. I'm just going to leave it as the IP address. That's all I have for mine. And I'll click save and finish. Looks like it's ready. So let's start using it. All right, so we have our Jenkins server set up and ready to go. But also I promised to walk you through the process of setting up an agent. So let's take care of that right now. And here in my Proxmox server, I've already created an instance that I plan on using for the agent. It's this one right here. So we're already on the summary page. I'll grab the IP just like last time. It's 206 at the end anyway. That's probably easy enough. So what I'll do is type SSH, paste in the IP address, this is yet another Ubuntu 2404 server, just like the original. And there we are. So here on the agent, we will need OpenJDK as well, just like we did with the server. So I'm running the exact same command again right here. Nothing different. Enter again. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to take a moment and let you know that I have a brand new course available, this time covering Ansible. My new 20 episode course covers all the basics of Ansible, such as entering commands, writing playbooks, refactoring plays into roles, encrypting and decrypting files, and much more. The course is full of hands-on examples to keep you engaged, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to use Ansible in your daily workflow. In fact, I'll even cover lesser known features, such as Ansible Pull. On the screen right now is a URL you could use to go directly to the course and start learning Ansible. In each lesson, I'll break down each component into easy to understand explanations, and along the way, you'll get real experience with Ansible. In fact, with over 20 years of experience in the industry, you'll be learning Ansible the way that is actually used in real data centers. For example, I'll also teach you the basics of version control along with Ansible during this course, since it's very common that the two will be used together. So check out my course and learn Ansible. You won't regret it. Now, let's get back to the video. And just like before, 
make sure we have Java available. And we do. So far, so good. Now, next, what we're going to do is grab the commands from this page right here, starting with the first one. And we're going to run those commands within our agent. And the first one is going to download agent.jar, which we now have. And then we'll grab this command here. Yours, of course, will vary. Now, before we run the agent, we will want to create its working directory. So what we'll do is run sudo mkdir slash var slash Jenkins, just like that. And now that exists. You can see it. If we list the storage, we have the Jenkins folder. Now, temporarily, I'm going to make that wide open. This is just for testing. We definitely don't want to leave it this way. And then what we're going to do is grab this command right here and paste it in. Let's go ahead and give that a run. And it says connected. So back in the server, let's go back to the dashboard. And we have a connected agent. It says agent is connected. So now this agent is available for work. Now, one problem though, is that the command that we ran, we had to run it manually. And since I've run it, it's taken over the terminal. I can hold Control and press C to break out, but that's also going to close the agent. I don't know about you, but it's not really all that convenient to have to run a command like this manually every time I want to do work. I want this to be automatically started for me, so that way I don't have to worry about it. So let's see how we go about setting up that process right now. Now what we'll do real quick is just remove the directory that I created earlier. Be very careful with an RM command. Now I could just change the permissions back to what they were supposed to be, but there's also going to be some temporary files in there. I'm just going to remove the entire directory. And that directory will be automatically recreated with the next command anyway. So we won't worry about it. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is add a user. Now I already have a user for myself here, but we want to create a Jenkins user for the agent to run as. So I'm going to paste that command right here. And here it is. We're creating the Jenkins user, setting the shell to slash bin slash bash. We want this to be a system account and we want the home directory to be created as well. We want the home directory to be slash bar slash Jenkins underscore home. And that'll be the new working directory for it anyway. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, we have the Jenkins user down there at the bottom. So now we have a user for the Jenkins agent itself. Next we'll do LS dash L against the var directory right here. We want to make sure that the Jenkins home directory has the right permissions and it does. You can see that the Jenkins user and group owns that directory. So we should be good to go there. And to continue along, there's another directory that we're going to want to create here. So we'll type sudo and then mkdir dash p then slash user. User is abbreviated here, usr local Jenkins hyphen service. So we're creating that directory there. And then next what we'll do is run sudo mv. We're going to move the agent jar file that we downloaded earlier. And we're going to move it into that folder that we just created. And as you can see, there's the file. Next, we'll make sure that the Jenkins user owns everything. We need to make sure that Jenkins owns that agent file just to be on the safe side in case your permissions might not be correct. What we'll do is just run sudo and then chown. Jenkins user, colon, Jenkins group, dash capital R. And we have the jar file. Next, what we're going to do is create a shell script. If you're curious how to write shell scripts, I have an entire tutorial series that covers that. I'll leave a card for that series right about here. But I'll walk you through what you need to know right now for this project. What we'll do is run sudo and then nano slash usr slash local. And we're going to call it start hyphen agent dot sh. I'll press enter. And we're going to type our normal heading here. And essentially what we're doing here, we're going to change into this directory right here. So this directory becomes our working directory 
And this curl command is going to re-download the agent.jar file every time. We have it there right now. We copied the initial one there, but every time this runs, it's going to look for an updated version. It's just going to copy it. So we'll make sure that we always have the latest version if it ever does get updated. Now the next thing we'll do is grab the second command, this one right here. We're gonna paste that in right here inside this file. And then we'll type exit zero, and that's our completed script. So what we'll do is save the file, exit out, then we'll mark it executable. And as you can see, I have these two files right here. So you should have these two files as well in your directory. If you do, then you're ready to move on to the next step. And the next step is for us to create a systemd unit file to start the agent for us automatically. And in order to set that up, we'll run sudo then nano slash etsy systemd system jenkins hyphen agent dot service. It's a brand new file. And what I've done is I've copied the data right here and I pasted it into the terminal. Now I have a full walkthrough on systemd if you want to check out that video. So I'm not going to go over everything here, but essentially what we're doing is changing the working directory and then we're going to run that script, the one that we created earlier. So what we'll do is save the file and we'll exit out and then we'll run sudo and then systemctl daemon hyphen reload, just like that. Next, let's enable the service. We can also start it up, make sure that it actually works. We can also check the status. As you can see, it's active and running. So if we go back to our browser, let's go back to the dashboard. Check it out, the agent is connected. So now not only do we have a Jenkins server, we also have a Jenkins agent and it starts automatically to make sure that it's always available when we need it to do work. How cool is that? And there you go. You now have your very own Jenkins server set up and ready to go and also an agent. Hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, please click that like button to let YouTube know that this video was helpful. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.